Good day everyone. In this lesson, you'll be able to trace the social origin and roots of Jose Rizal, including his early influences. In the later part of the lesson, you'll be able to appreciate Jose Rizal's formation through his scholastic triumphs in Ateneo and the challenging years at the University of Santo Tomas. To begin with, let us try to trace Rizal's birth and social origin. Jose Protasio Rizal Mercado y Alonso Rialonda was born on a moonlit night a few days before full moon on June 19, 1861, between 11 and 12 midnight in Calamba, Laguna. Being born on a full moon night was already a sort of an omen those days. Ang paniniwala ng mga matatanda kapag ang bata ay pinanganak sa gabing malaki ang buwan ay maagang mamamatay. Kung hindi man, ay mamalasin sa buhay. Perhaps it was a coincidence that he was executed at Bagumbayan in 1896. In his diary, Rizal said that his mother almost died giving birth to him because he had literally unusual big head. He also wrote in his autobiography that he was born into the Valley of Tears. And I quote, My arrival in this Valley of Tears would have cost my mother her life had she not vowed to the Virgin of Antipolo that she would take me on a pilgrimage to that shrine. End of quote. Why did Rizal describe Calamba as Valley of Tears? Calamba, a lakeshore town that was a prosperous agricultural community, was devoted to the production of sugar during Rizal's time. The name Calamba was derived from Calan and Banga, as the place was known for clay pottery. The Dominican friars practically owned the whole town during Rizal's time, so most of its people were their tenants, including Rizal's family. During the 19th century, Calamba's economy relied on sugar production at the Hacienda de Calamba. Life was, however, filled with hardships on the part of the people who were just tenants in the hacienda. He also wrote in his diary that he witnessed every day these cruelties of both Dominicans and Guardia Civil to the Calamba people, thus qualifying the town as Valley of Tears. Francisco Mercado and Chodora Alonso, Jose Rizal's parents, became one of the principal inquilinos or tenants of the hacienda beginning 1848. Records show that almost all the lands in Calamba at the time were owned by the Dominican friars, which were attacked by Jose Rizal in his writings. Moreover, Calamba is on the southwest shore of the picturesque Laguna de Bay, some 64 kilometers south of Manila. Alam nyo ba na ang mga magagandang tanawin ng bayan ng Calamba ang nagsilbing inspirasyon ng batang si Jose Rizal para linangin ang kanyang interes at sa katalento sa pagpipinta at pagsusulat ng mga tula. Tulad ng lawa ng Laguna, at ang bundok ng makiling na tanaw sa dalampasigan ng Kalamba. Three days after Rizal was born, he was baptized by Father Rufino Collantes at the Old Kalamba Church. Padre Pedro Casanyas, who was a native of Kalamba and close friend of the family, stood as his godfather. The baptismal certificate was, however, signed by Father Leoncio Lopez, the successor of Father Colliantes. During the christening ceremony, Father Colliantes was impressed by the big 
head of Jose Rizal. And he even told the parents of our national hero to take good care of Jose. For someday, he will become a great man. Doña Chodora named her son Jose in honor of Saint Joseph the Worker, which is the town's patron saint, to whom she was a firm devotee. Also, Jose was named after one of his ancestors, most likely his granduncle in the mother's side, named Jose Florentino, who was the only relative of our national hero elected at the Spanish Cortes years before he was born. Some authors also speculated that Jose was named after one of his grandparents. Do you know that Jose Rizal had a second name? His biographer said that Don Francisco gave him a second name, Protasio, which was taken from a calendar of names of saints. It was said that the saints Herbatius and Protasius, who were twin Christian martyrs of Italy and now patron saints of Milan and haymakers, gave his father the idea of his second name. Don Francisco chose Saint Protasius because it was closer to the word protesto, which means I protest. Interestingly, his father was a supporter of the liberals and was against the rule of the friars in Calamba, most especially the Dominicans. So, alam nyo na kung kanino nagmana itong si Jose Rizal sa pagiging liberal at radical. Moving on to our national hero's ancestry, his father Francisco Mercado descended from a hard-working and intelligent Chinese merchant named Lamco. Lamco was a native migrant from Chinchu district of China. He migrated in the Philippines in 1690 probably because of a famine or political troubles in his own district in China during his time. At the age of 35, Lamco was baptized into the Catholic faith in Binondo at a parish managed by the Dominicans in June of 18, oh, 1697 and took the name Domingo in honor of the founder of the Dominican order. Now, let's talk about Rizal's father. His father, Don Francisco Mercado, was a well-educated farmer with studies in Latin and philosophy at the Colegio de San Jose in Manila. He was born May 11, 1818 in Binyan, Laguna. Jose regarded him as a model of fathers. He was a tenant and also a landowner of the Dominican estates in Calamba. Don Francisco died at the house of his daughter, Narcisa, a year after Jose Rizal's execution. Jose Rizal's mother, Doña Chodora Alonso Rialonda y Quintos, was born on November 9, 1827 in Maysic, Tondo, Manila. Jose considered her a remarkable woman. She possessed business ability, refined culture. She was also a literary giant and had the courage of a frugal woman. She descended from Eugenio Orsua, who was believed to be a descendant of Japanese settlers in the Philippines. Benigna Ochoa, wife of Eugenio Orsua, was a descendant of mixed Spanish, Chinese, and Tagalog ancestry. Regina Ochoa, daughter of Eugenio and Benigna, was married to Manuel de Quintos Jr., also a Chinese mestizo from an affluent family in Pangasinan. Thus, we can say Rizal was of mixed racial origin particularly Philippine, of course, 
Spanish, Chinese, and Japanese ancestry. His mother, Chudora, was educated at Colegio de Santa Rosa, which developed her fine knowledge in business, art, literature, music, and other forms of Filipino culture. On her mother's side, Captain Lorenzo Alberto Alonso, the father of Chodora and the Lolo of Jose Rizal, was an engineer and surveyor and had even published engineering books. Brigida de Quintos, Chodora's mother, or the Lola of Jose Rizal, was well educated and was known as a mathematician. Manuel de Quintos Jr., father of Brigida, or Chodora's great-grandfather, was an attorney of Manila. He graduated at the University of Santo Tomas and was known as a rich Chinese mestizo of Pangasinan. Rizal's family belonged also to the Principalia class because some of them were local leaders. Let's start with Francisco Mercado, who was the son of Domingo Lamco. He was appointed municipal captain of Binyan in 18, 1783. Francisco's son, Juan Mercado, also called as Captain Juan, who is Rizal's grand grandfather, served as Gobernador Silio of Binyan for three times. 1808, 1813, and 1823. A historian named Daniel, Daniel Craig wrote in his book, Captain Juan has a notable record of his generosity. During his term as Gobernador Silio, there was absence of oppression, and his administration was known for official honesty which distinguished his term from that of many who held the same office. In his mother's side, Lorenzo Alberto Alonso, father of Chodora, served also as a municipal captain of Pinyan in 1824, and after that, he likewise served as deputy of the Philippines to the Spanish Cortes. Also, Lorenzo's father, Cipriano Alonso, served as municipal captain of Binyan in 1797. Manuel de Quinto Sr., Doña Chodora's great-great-grandfather, served as a municipal captain of Lingayen, Pangasinan. Moreover, Rizal's ancestry had history of heroic tendencies and liberal-mindedness. Still, according to Craig, Manuel de Quintos Sr., uh, no, the brother of Manuel de Quintos Sr., named Joaquin de Quintos, was a leader of the Chinese mestizos who protested against the arbitrariness of their provincial governor. This is an evidence of a family of courage that Rizal belonged, which was equally uncommon in those days because complaints under Spanish rule no matter how well founded meant trouble for the complainants kadalasan no mga panahon na yon ang mga taong tumutulig sa laban sa mga Espanyol ay kung hindi man kinukulong pinapatapon at pinapatay hindi lang ngayong termino ni Pangulong Duterte naging uso ang judicial extrajudicial killings kundi pati na rin sa panahon ng mga kamag-anak ni Jose Rizal. Dagdag pa ni Craig, one member of Rizal's family in mother's side was fined 25,000 pesos. Malaking pera na ito ng, no, nung panahon ni Jose Rizal. Okay? Uh, he was fined 25,000 pesos by the Supreme Court of the Philippines for contempt of religion. It appears that Rizal belonged to a family of fighters against abusive people. Rizal's father, Francisco, 
was also a person with independent mind and spirit. Because for him, the surname Mercado does not suit well with his status as inquilino or tenant farmer of the Dominicans. So he decided to adopt the word Rizal. In Spanish accent, Rizal, which means Greenfields, as their family name drawn from the list of approved names published in uh, Catalogo Alfabetico de Apellidos by virtue of 1849 Royal Decree of then Governor General Narciso Claveria. Here is Rizal's family tree from his father's line age. Ines de la Rosa is the daughter of Agustin Cinco, an educated Chinese rice merchant, and Jacinta Rafaela, a daughter of Christian Chinese and Chinese mestizo. Bernarda Monica was a Chinese mestiza, while Cyril Alejandro was the daughter of Xionco, Domingos or Domingo Lamco's Chinese grandson. Samantalang ang line aids naman ng kanyang ina na si Doña Chudora ay makikita sa chart na ito. Nakita na natin ito kanina kung sino-sino ang mga ang mga miyembro ng pamilya ng kanyang ina. Question. Ilang kapatid meron si Jose Rizal? A. Nine brothers and two sisters ba? B. Two brothers and eight sisters. C. One brother and nine sisters. D. Two brothers and nine sisters. The answer is C. Jose Rizal had one brother and nine sisters. Ang panganay na si Saturnina ay nag-aral sa Lacong Cordia College. Na pangasawa niya si Manuel Hidalgo ng Tanawan, Batangas. At nagkaroon sila ng limang anak. Siya rin ang tumulong kay Pascual Poblete para maisalin sa Tagalog ang Noli ni Tangire. Ang susunod ay ang kanyang kuya na si Pasyano. Jose Rizal's only brother studied at Colegio de San Jose. He became a farmer and a major general of KKK during the Philippine Revolution after Rizal's execution. He had two children with his mistress, Severina de Sena of Los Baños. He later died of tuberculosis after the revolution. Biographers of our national hero agree that it was his brother, Pasiano, who influenced Jose to study in Europe, including his many major decisions as a reformist. His kuya Pasiano also sacrificed a lot for him to fulfill his mission in Europe. Next on the list is his ate Narcisa, also studied in La Concordia College. She was a teacher at the same time musician and was married to Antonio Lopez of Morong and they had nine children. It is believed that she was the only sibling of Jose who can recite from memory all the poems of our national hero. Ang susunod ay ang kanyang ate, Olympia. Together with Narcisa, they studied at La Concordia College and was a close friend of Segunda Katigba, who happens to be Rizal's first love. She was married to Sub Silvestre Ubaldo, a telegraph operator from Manila. She, however, died from complications of childbirth during Jose Rizal's first homecoming from his travels in Europe. Next on the list is his Ate Lucia. She was married to Mariano Herbosa of Calamba, a farmer and a nephew of Pedro Casanyas, Jose Rizal's baptismal godfather. When Mariano Herbosa died, his remains were denied of a Christian burial because he was the brother-in-law of Jose Rizal. This happened after the publication of the Noli Metangere, wherein Spanish priests were very angry with the way 
Rizal portrayed them in his novel. Susunod sa listahan ay ang kanyang ate Maria, ang tinaguri ang confidant ni Jose Rizal, ang pang-anim na anak ng pamilya Rizal. Sa kanyang ate Lucia lang naman sinasabi ni Jose Rizal karamihan ng kanyang mga problema at sa looben. Katunayan, ni kay ate Maria niya sinabi ang kanyang kagustuhang mapangasawa itong si Josephine Bracken ilang oras bago siya barilin sa luneta. Sa kadahilan ng wala sa mga kapatid niya at mga magulang niya ang may gustong sa kanyang desisyon. Sa isang sulat ni Jose na may petsang ikalabin dalawa ng Disyembre taong 1891, inilathala rin ni Jose ang kanyang planong pagtayo ng kolonya ng Pilipinas sa Saba, isla ng Borneo. Masasabing ang kanyang ate Maria ang pinakamalapit niyang kapatid, lalong-lalo na sa pagsasabi sa kanyang mga problema at sa loobin. And the seventh child is Jose Rizal, also known as Pepe. He is of course under investigation because a more detailed illustration of his life will be tackled in the coming weeks. He was followed by his sister Concepcion. Concepcion, also known as Concha, unfortunately died of sickness at the age of three. Among his sisters, It is said that Pepe loved most the little Concha, who was a year younger than him. Jose played games and shared children's stories with her. And, because of her, he felt the beauty of sisterly love. When Concha died of sickness in 1865, Jose mournfully wept because of her death. He wrote in his diary, When I was four years old, I lost my little sister, Concha. And then for the first time, I shed tears caused by love and grief. This was considered the first sorrow of our national hero. The next to Concha is Josefa, nicknamed Pangoy. She was the sister of Rizal, who was epileptic. Yes, may kapatid si Jose Rizal na epileptic. After the execution of our national hero, the epileptic Josepa joined the Katipunan and was even elected the president of its women's section. She was one of the original 29 women admitted to the Katipunan along with Gregoria de Jesus who happens to be the wife of Andres Bonifacio. Trinidad or Trining came after Josefa. Trining was the tenth child of the family and the custodian of Rizal's last and greatest poem, Mi Ultimo Adios. Ang alam ni Rizal, si Trining ang pinakatamad mag-aral sa kanilang magkakapatid. Sa isang sulat niya noong Marso 1886 kay Trining, ay isinalaysay niya ang mga babae sa Alemanya or Germany ay masisipag mag-aral. Kaya't pinayuhan niya si Trining na habang bata pa ito ay dapat magbasa ng magbasa ng buong puso. Makaraan ang apat na taon ay nagulat na lamang itong si Rizal nang makatanggap siya ng liham mula kay Trining. Pinapaalam nito na nakapagtapos ito ng kolehiyo. Sa lahat ng mga kapatid ni Rizal, etong si Trining ang may pinakamaraming ambag sa bayan. Tulad ng naging co-founder siya ng kauna-unahang feminist organization sa Pilipinas na may pangalang Asosasyon Feminista Filipina. Pati na ang unang Masonic Lodge para sa mga babaeng Filipina. Bukod sa mga ito, naging aktibong sa promosyon ng kalusugang pangkababaihan. Nagtatag ng mga proyektong asam palakasin ang kalusugan ng mga nanay at kanilang mga anak. And finally, ang bunso ng pamilya Rizal ay si Soledad, na rin sa tawag na Choleng. 
nag-aral sa Lacon Cordia College na kung saan naging matalik niyang kaibigan si Leonor Rivera, ang pinakamamahal na kasintahan ni Jose Rizal na pinangakuan niya ng kasal. Si Choleng ay naging isang guro sa isang mataling hagang sulat ni Jose kay Choleng na may petsang ikaanim ng Hunyo taong 1890. Pinuri ni Jose ang pagiging guro ni Choleng pero pinayuhan niya na maging isang magandang ehemplo ng kagandahang asal para sa kanyang mga mag-aaral. Sabi ni Jose sa kanya, For the one who should teach should be better than the persons who need her learning. Pinayuhan din niya si Choleng na Pinayuhan din niya si Choleng sa kanyang pakikipag-asawa kay Pantalyon Quintero ng Kalamba na walang pahintulot ng kanilang mga magulang. Sabi ni Pepe, Because of you, the peace of our family has been disturbed. Overprotective din pala itong si Jose sa kanyang nakababatang kapatid na babae. Ano? Malamang gusto lang turuan ni Jose si Choleng na bigyang galang ang kanilang mga magulang. Kasi noong mga panahong iyon, isang malaking pagrespeto sa mga magulang ang hingin ang kanilang basbas para makapag-asawa, lalo na ang mga babae. Dagdag pa ni Pepe sa kanyang liham kay Choleng na dapat ang mga kababaihan ay nililigawan sa pamamagitan ng pagdalaw ng mga manliligaw sa kanilang bahay. Sabi pa niya, If you have a sweetheart, behave towards him nobly and with dignity. Instead of resorting to secret meetings and conversations which do nothing but lower a woman's worth in the eyes of a man. You should value more, esteem more your honor, and you will be more esteemed and valued. Ganyan kasi si Jose Rizal sa lahat ng mga niligawan at naging kasintahan niya. Gentleman as we call it today. Let us now take a look at his childhood days. Rizal was fondly called by his brother and sisters as Ute and Pepe, or Pepito by neighbors, friends, and relatives. The first memory of Rizal in his infancy, according to his diary, was his happy days in the family garden, exchanging stories when he was three years old. His father even built a little nipa hut for him to play at daytime. He had a usual walk in the town on moonlit nights with his pet dog named Usman. Yes, he had a pet dog named Usman. He always treasured the special care shown by his parents to him due to his poor health and frail body as a young boy. On June 6, 1868, Jose and his father left Calamba and went on a pilgrimage to Antipolo, particularly to the Our Lady of Peace and Good Voyage, in order to fulfill his mother's vow when he was born. Remember, Doña Chodora, while dangerously giving birth to Rizal, vowed to the Virgin of Antipolo that she was that she would take her child on a pilgrimage pilgrimage to her shrine if they both survived. Who were the personal childhood influences of Jose Rizal? First was his uncle Manuel, who was a husky and athletic man that encouraged Rizal to develop his frail body by means of physical exercises and sports like fencing and wrestling. It was his uncle Manuel who taught him first fencing and wrestling. Second was his uncle Jose Alberto, who studied for 11 years in British school in Calcutta, India, and had traveled in Europe. His uncle Jose Alberto was the one who inspired Rizal to develop his artistic ability through sketching, painting, and 
sculpture. Yes, magaling si Jose Rizal mag-drawing, magpinta, at maglilok. Third, his Uncle Gregorio, who was a book lover and the one who intensified Rizal's voracious reading of good books. And lastly, Father Leoncio Lopez, who was the old and learned parish priest of Calamba that fostered Rizal's love for study, scholarship, and intellectual honesty. Previously, it was said that the landscapes of Calamba were favorable environments that honed Rizal's artistic inclinations. Two magnificent, magnificent sceneries caught his attention, the scenic Laguna Lake and the majestic Mount Makiling. He wrote in his diary, I spent many, many hours of my childhood down on the shore of the lake. I was thinking of what was beyond. I was dreaming of what might be over the other side of the wave. However, the frequent sight of abuses by the Guardia Civil developed results heroic imaginations. He wrote in his diary, almost every day in our town, we see the Guardia Civil Lieutenant coming and enduring some unarmed and inaggressive villagers whose only fault was they failed to take off their hats and made their bows. Aside from that, the alcalde treated also the poor villagers the same way whenever he visited us. Rizal witnessed these abuses. Even his family members were victims of Guardia civil abuses. One of them was his mother, Doña Chudora, who was unjustly arrested and imprisoned. Yes, Rizal's mother was imprisoned when he was young. The story started with Rizal's father, Doña Don Francisco, frankly dealt with two Spanish officials. He welcomed them at their house, fed them, and gave them rooms to sleep. But Don Francisco refused to give feeds for their horses. These officials sought vengeance by fabricating a lie that Rizal's mother conspired with, with her brother Alberto to kill the latter's wife. Thus, his mother was arrested without due process. The poor Doña Chodora was forced to walk from Calamba to Santa Cruz, a distance of around 50 kilometers, ang layo nun, for her to be imprisoned in the provincial jail for two and a half years. Pinaglakad ang kanyang nanay ng more than 50 kilometers. This injustice affected the members of the Rizal family, and most particularly, the young Jose Rizal. Recalling his mother's incarceration, Rizal wrote in his memoirs, Our mother was unjustly snatched away from us, and by whom? By some men who had been our friends and whom we treated as honored guests. We learned later that our mother got sick far from us and at an advanced age. But she finally succeeded to be acquitted and vindicated in the eyes of her judges, accusers, and even her enemies. But after how long? After two and a half years. Fortunately, his mother's case was dismissed. Jose, Jose Rizal never forgot these injustices. This created hatred against the Spanish regime. And this hatred even grew bigger with the execution of the three Filipino priest martyrs, Gomburza. That feeling grew upon him as a young boy that the misfortunes of his people were to be worth fighting. 
the injustices suffered by his mother with the sorrow brought by the death of Concha, however, strengthened his character. And this enabled him to resist adversities and difficulties in his later years. Rizal's early education was at home, wherein his mother was his first teacher. On his mother's lap, he learned the alphabet and prayers at the age of three. Rizal wrote in his memoirs, My mother taught me how to read and to say haltingly the humble prayers, which I raised fervently to God. At the age of five, Rizal was able to read haltingly the Spanish family Bible. Doña Chodora was conscientious, patient, and understanding tutor and teacher to Pepe. It was Doña Chodora who first discovered her son's talent for poetry and accordingly encouraged him to write poems at a young age. To enlighten the monotony of of memorizing the alphabets and to stimulate her son's imagination, she related many stories. One remar remarkable story was the story of the moth and the flame, ang gamu-gamu at ang apoy. One of his profound memories was when his mother narrated to him the story of the moth which had deeply stirred his thoughts. When Doña Chodora was reading to Jose the story of El Amigo de, de los Niños, she noticed that Jose was getting drowsy and his attention was caught by moths encircling the flame of the oil lamp. She stopped reading and instead read to Jose a different story, a Tagalog story which was entitled ang gamu-gamu at ang apoy which at that time caught Jose Rizal's attention ayon sa kanyang autobiography and I quote my mother finished the fable I was not listening all my attention, all my mind all my thoughts were concentrated on the fate of the moth young and dead and full of illusions the light seems to be more beautiful, dazzling, and attractive. I understand why the moth flutter around the lights, endangering their lives. What preoccupied me most was the death of the moth. But at the bottom of my heart, I did not blame it. Ang kwento ng gumugamo at ang apoy ay nag-iwan ng malalim na kahulugan sa murang isipan ni Pepe. Ayon sa kanyang ina, wag daw niyang tularan yung gamu-gamu. Sabi niya kay Pepe, wag mong tularan ang gamu-gamu na lumapit sa apoy kasi ikapapahamak mo ito. Noong mga panahon ngayon, ay kamakailan lang na ginarote ang tatlong paring martir na, na uh, gombursa sa bagumbayan. Pero sa isipan ni Pepe, hindi dapat pagsisisihan ng gamu-gamu ang kanyang kapahamakan sapagkat isang karangalan ang pag-alay ng buhay ni para sa liwanag ng apoy. Such a noble death, ikanga niya. During Rizal's time, the family had almost the largest library in the town of Calamba with an extensive collection of books. These books kindled Jose's interest in reading and literature. As Pepe grew older, his parents employed private tutors to give him lessons at home. First of them was Maestro Celestino, Rizal's first tutor. Maestro Lucas Padua and the old Leon Monroy, a former classmate of Don Francisco, who taught our national hero subjects in Spanish and Latin. And 
including literature and others. Unfortunately, the old man died five months after, and after the death of Leon, his parents decided to send Pepe to a private school in Binyan. That's all for this lesson. Please watch the other next videos. Thank you for watching.